Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you three cool things that you can do with PyAuto GUI in Python in order to automate a lot of tasks on your computer. It's been about a year and a half now since I started playing with Python as a coding language, and I must tell you, it is a really incredible experience. Not only because Python's pretty easy to learn if you have any coding background in any other language, or even if you're just starting fresh, but it's also incredible how many libraries exist for it and different things that you can start playing with very quickly without having a lot of experience in them. I've done all sorts of things, including automation of spreadsheets, uh, different time calculations, web scraping. I've used it for graphical user interfaces as you've seen some of my videos before and even putting them out to things like the Raspberry Pi or even MicroPython to control microcontrollers as well. So there's just an incredible amount of things that you can do and the list is always growing because there's always new libraries being created. If there isn't something already existing for Python there probably is something already in development or with a little bit of time and effort you could create your own modules that could benefit the whole community. One of the things that I like to automate is web interfaces to get through some of those login processes and functionalities that you do over and over again in the same websites. In this video, I'm gonna show you three different things that are pretty cool that you can do with a library called PyAuto GUI, which lets you control your computer the way that you would through a keyboard or mouse in order to automate a lot of processes. So without further ado, let's get into it. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm using VS Code, and I'm assuming you already have Python installed. You're just going to need to do pip install PyAuto GUI and let that run through the installation process. I'm using a Mac to demonstrate here today, but on a Windows machine, it's even easier because there's not usually any other additional libraries you need to install. On the first script, I'm going to show you how to find the location of your mouse cursor because you're going to need to be able to do that in order to click and double click. So as we look through mouse functions, I'm just going to create a little true loop after importing PyAuto GUI and in that true loop I'm going to print PyAuto GUI dot position which is the location of the mouse at any given time. Now by using the true loop it's going to constantly refresh and constantly print an updated position. When I try to run that you see here it says you must first install the PyOBJC-Core module and if you try to do that from the terminal prompt here, you will find there's some problems with it. It says that it's already installed, but yet it'll still give you the same error over and over again. So the solution is to click on the link there that it refers you to the documentation, and then scroll down here. There's instructions that can be used for Windows and Linux and also Mac OS, which is what I'm using here. So I'm gonna find the command that it suggests here and going to copy that over and open a terminal window and then just paste it in there. And as you can see, again, it's going to run through the installation process. And there's quite a bit. PyAuto GUI is doing a lot of conversion to other commands. And so it does take a, a minute or so to install. And then when we run it again, now you can see in this bottom left-hand corner that as I move the mouse around, you get new X and Y coordinates as you move it around the screen. Now this is good for the entire desktop area. So depending on your resolution, it will be different. So now if I was to try to find a particular spot, like a search box on YouTube, I'd simply have to put my mouse in that spot and then option tab over or on a Windows machine, alt tab over, and you'd be able to see the current X and Y coordinates of your mouse position. Now that we have those coordinates, it's easy to create a little script that will actually click the mouse at that location. You will also need to stop that mouse position script from running because it'll just run forever because of the while true loop. So you just need to click the kill button, which is the trash can, and then it'll stop the script and let you know that you're back to the command prompt ready to run again. On my new script, I'm gonna import PyAuto GUI again, and now I'm just gonna use PyAutoGUI.click and put in the coordinates that we found. Now the coordinates we had was 613 and 93, but I'm just gonna round them to the nearest 10, which should be just fine. 
Now if I was to test it out, you can see that once again we get an error and that's telling us that we don't yet have the permission to click the mouse from an automated script. So if you click the preferences and then click the lock here to unlock it on a Mac, you'll find that you'll now have access to give VS Code permission in order to um, be able to use the mouse click function. So after giving it the permission and then locking it up again, I can close that, rerun it, And now you can see it does click at the top where the search bar was. But as you can tell, if I was trying to do this with the YouTube page that I had previously loaded, by the time I ran this file and then clicked, it would be too late because it would have already moved the mouse to that position and clicked. So I'm going to add some delay that gives me time to switch over the windows. I'm simply going to, from the time library, import the sleep function. And then I'm going to add five seconds of sleep, which will be giving me enough time to switch over to the YouTube page. So if we run this again, and then I do my command tab or on windows, alt tab, it gives it time to pop over and then click the mouse in the search bar, as you can see there. to do double click, right click, and lots of other little things. So if you consult the documentation, you'll find all of the different parameters that are required for those things. Mostly though, they work on the same idea of X and Y coordinates. So let's add the ability to type something in that search bar. Well, all we need to do is use the pyotogui.write function and then within quotations, put what we want to write out. In a shameless plug for my channel, let's just put in bald guy DIY and then run it again and see what we get. That's really all it takes to do keyboard control. And on the Mac, you don't have to do anything extra for that. It doesn't generate any error messages. So we'll simply tab back to our YouTube page and we'll let it click in the box. It also types in our search term. You can of course click it manually or you could find the location of the mouse on the search button and click it through the same function we already explored. Now, if you look through the documentation on the PyAuto GUI, uh, reference pages, you'll see here a lot of different functions, things that you can do. There's a function called press, which emulates pressing a key. And if you choose the keyboard key, you can see all of the keys that are available to be pressed and also what to call them. In the case of the enter button, if we want to be able to press enter after our search criteria, it's just enter within quotes, all lowercase. To make the functionality of our search a little bit better, I'm just gonna do a pyotogui.press, and that's gonna press the enter key when we're done. Now you can see it types in there and presses enter, which brings us to the results of my channel. There are a bunch of other things that you can do. There's hotkey functionality, so you can program control and shift together, or control shift escape, or as, there, as the example is here, or even do other sequences where you would hold one key down press some other keys and then let that key up. As you can see here, that's using the key down function. And then while holding that key down, you're gonna do key presses. And then at the end, you'll do a key up, which is simulating releasing that key. The documentation gives you so many different cases. You can find pretty much anything you'd need. The last thing I wanna show off is how you can use the screenshot functionality in order to take snapshots of your screen and then locate different elements of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is the pyotogui.screenshot function, and then all you need to do is specify a file name, and that's gonna be what you want to call the screenshot image that you're taking. In this case, I'm just gonna call it screen.png. It's gonna save in the same folder as your Python script. Now you can see immediately it also gives you one more error message saying that you don't have the rights to do that yet. So just like before, we're going to select it and give permission for VS Code to be able to do that. On the Mac, that's required. On Windows, it's not. Uh, and then we're gonna run it again after reloading VS Code, because it tells you there you need to quit it first. After running that script, you can see it creates a screenshot on my desktop called screen.png. And now I can open that up and what I'm left with here is actually an image of what I had, not the actual VS Code interface. This image can be edited. So if we were to take our previous look here at our YouTube page that we loaded and searched for Bald Guy DIY, we can now add a screenshot function here and save that image to a PNG file. So I'm gonna call it Bald Guy DIY channel.png. 
I'm going to add a couple more seconds of sleep here in order to let the search results load after the enter is pressed. Now, if we run it and clear that up again, we're going to see after five seconds, it types in the name and then it does a search. And then with the search results, it creates a screenshot. Now, if we were to open that in an image editor, I'm using GIMP here, which is a free software, and then select the part of it that we want to recognize. We can now give PyAuto GUI uh, an image to look for, something to reference. Now I'm going to crop the whole image to the selection that I made and then export just that as a new file, which is going to be the clue that the software looks for. Here I'm going to just call it boldguylogo.png, save it to the desktop as well. And once the export's done, I can now reference it in the code and it'll be able to find it. In order to do this, we're going to use something called pyautogui.locate center on screen, which is going to lo locate the center of this image. And you create two new variables, x and y, and make them equal to the location of that logo. Once pyautogui can find it, it's going to save those values of the x and the y. And now all we need to do is use them with the click function in order to click on the location of that logo right in the middle. Now, if we were to run it and load our YouTube page again, after clearing the box, five seconds later, of course, it will type in the name of the channel. It'll hit enter. And when the results load, it now also clicks on the image, which you can tell it worked because it loads my first video in queue. There are so many other functions in the documentation, but this is a great start and I hope you'll check it out. So there you have three simple ideas, but also incredibly powerful to automate your computer with PyAuto GUI. As usual, the ideas I've shared are building blocks so that you can take them and turn them into more creative and personalized tasks that you can do on your own computer. So play with this library, look through the documentation and see all of the features that are available. And I'm sure you'll find some use for it on even simple little things that you need automated in the future. If you like this kind of content, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I post a new video every weekend on all sorts of DIY interests. If you want to send me an email, my information is in the description below or leave a comment. Tell me what kind of videos you'd like to see in the next weeks and months, and I'll use them as inspiration for future content. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, hopefully those that you can automate a little, don't be afraid to be balder.